our third or even fourth <laughs> presentation uh, at a wiki conference. Uh, but it's not the same presentation, don't worry, <laughs> it's still the previous ones because we are progressing and the project is uh, basically heading to its final. Um, so the Heritage Garden Network is a project that is financed uh, by the Swedish Institute uh, and the grant proposal was prepared uh, by Wikimedia Sweden as a leading partner, uh, Wikimedia Ukraine, represented today by Olesha, Wikimedia Georgia, represented by Mehman, Wikimedia Poland, represented by me, and with the support of uh, CHAV, <laughs> of uh, CE Hub and Content, Content Partnership Hub. And the basic idea is that this is a seed project, meaning uh, we have a couple of, um, sorry? Oh. <laughs> um, we have several months to come up with an idea uh, and to decide if we want to create a bigger, um, long-lasting network of organizations, not just with media organizations, uh, that are engaged in uh, safeguarding natural and cultural heritage uh, using Wikimedia platforms. Um, and we started in December last year, uh, and uh, soon, within a month, uh, we are going to finish the seed phase of the project. And then we will have to decide if we want to apply for a bigger grant. And if we do, and if we get it, then we will have another three years uh, to actually create the network. Now was just the time to consult internally, to meet with experts, um, to organize working groups, and to get as many insights as possible in order to decide if such a network should exist. And uh, the, the end of the project um, will be uh, during the final event. It's going to be a hybrid event, and you are all welcomed on the 7th of November. Uh, the offline part of this event is going to take place in Warsaw, uh, but due to limited resources, since this is a seed project, uh, we cannot give scholarships uh, for a trip. Um, so I definitely encourage you to participate online. So how do we work? Uh, we created four working groups, and each of the group uh, consults with um, volunteers, experts, both internal and external. And each of the group has to come up with the so-called final paper. It's not an academic paper, actually. It's more like a report with all the insights that we got during that time. And since the time is limited and resources are limited, we, um, we acknowledge that we are not able to um, to find out everything that there is, uh, but we were trying to get the essence, uh, at least. So the first working group um, is about risks, what kind of challenges uh, could possibly um, harness devel the development of such a network. Uh, technology and content uh, that explores um, how actually Wikimedia and current uh, technological surrounding uh, can cooperate in order to better safeguard uh, heritage. Uh, engagement working group uh, that was trying to figure out uh, what exactly do we have to do in order to engage volunteers for crowdsourcing uh, into using Wikimedia for safeguarding cultural and natural heritage. Uh, we mean like people that were not involved in Wikimedia before. Uh, and legal and copyright group uh, analyzes all regulations uh, and other documents uh, that could be actually important for um, for the network if it comes into existence in future. Uh, so we met several times offline. Uh, we had a chance to uh, visit several cultural uh, institutions, for example, when we were in Sweden, we visited uh, the Swedish archives that, as you may uh, guess, are full of documents uh, related to the sea region because this is uh, the primary region that we are interested in. Uh, and uh, we met with various experts uh, and volunteers, and at a certain point, um, 
the people were we did not have to attract people to the working groups, they were coming to us as well. Uh, and what we've discovered, for example, was that we, uh, experts from different regions than CE or Baltic region, uh, where we work, were also valuable for the working groups. And we had some great insights from India, um, from Latin America, uh, from all parts of the world, and it was all relevant for our findings. So today we are going to give you a very short and sweet presentation uh, of our key insights from every working group. Uh, and Technology Working Group is led uh, by uh, Wikimedia Sweden, but our colleagues from Sweden are not here, so might not Yeah, will instead present. of Eric, I will present, but you can feel the out of Eric here. So uh, in Technology and Content Work Group, uh, we want to like answer the three question. Uh, first is uh, how we can uh, like uh, use the best way uh, our Wikimedia platforms, uh, which will be useful not just for us, like just Wikipedians, but also for everyone else, like for li librarians or uh, workers of museum and etc. And uh, how we can use this data from uh, these uh, like the different uh, stakeholders in our platforms, and uh, at the end also uh, how uh, we can collaborate with different different partners. Uh, uh, in like bringing the data or providing our data for them. And uh, the key insights from this research, uh, what we got is that um, like, mm, uh, we are providing the more resources for Wikipedians throughout the Wikipedia, throughout the Wikimedia Commons. Uh, but uh, at the end we see that uh, not librarians or uh, any of different uh, stakeholders uh, not you like can't use the, our uh, resources what we have in Wikimedia Commons in best way, and uh, our key point here uh, to provide more uh, tools for them to use uh, in the best way what we have, and also bring uh, their materials and their resources to Wikimedia Commons in best way, we providing the uh, best tools for them. Uh, and also, uh, we realized that uh, sometimes when we have like Wikimedia, oh, sorry, Wikilog monuments or Wikilog errors uh, project, uh, we have some lists. Uh, the volunteers are capturing uh, different kind of the objects during this uh, contest, but uh, they uh, don't have more information and uh, how like how to capture uh, the objects uh, what we need for the our platforms. And uh, our goal is to provide more resources for them to uh, use uh, and capture the, what we need for our platforms. And also, uh, we are researching how to bring 3D or 2D uh, content to Wikimedia Commons. Uh, there are some legal restrictions, or uh, our platforms is not the best uh, option to use uh, to upload the 3D. And uh, we are now researching how to uh, we can like modify our tools. Uh, to bring more 3D uh, features to our platform. Yeah, that's what we, are, we have on the sort of technology group. Uh, so the engagement working group uh, focuses on um, things that make uh, networks based on volunteers and crowdsourcing long-lasting. So it's a very valid uh, topic for Wikimedia movement uh, itself. Uh, and uh, it is one of the wishes of the grant maker that the network is long-term, long-lasting, sustainable. So co cooperation um, is a crucial thing. So we are trying to look closely into different kinds of networks, uh, ones that we can use for benchmark. Uh, we consulted experts and researchers who are looking in details into what actually makes people uh, want to uh, join such initiatives and uh, a very a very short uh, version of, uh, of our insights, the longer version will be in the final paper, is that first of all people need to be emotionally engaged and motivated in order to um, cooperate with the initiative and here we understand that we have to really Good focus on communication, on proper communication. One that not only refers to your intellect, um, but also to your emotions, your sense of, uh, for example, belonging to a certain heritage. And uh, in our previous presentations, we used uh, a set of pictures as a test 
where we were showing a historical site with and without a well-known monument. Uh, so that, those kind of uh, things uh, make people think about why is it important to, to safeguard uh, the heritage, how would the world look like without. Um, so we want to definitely explore uh, this further. Uh, our second insight is that we have found so many good practices from within the Wikimedia movement, not just within GLAM, but also education and many other parts of the movement. And they are scattered and perhaps, this is a very fresh uh, idea, perhaps the first year uh, of the Heritage Guard Network uh, should be like the zero uh, stage uh, where at first we uh, try to accumulate the body of knowledge from within the movement so that we don't invent the wheel um, once again. And, uh, and the third finding is that user experience design really matters. Uh, we analyzed uh, other projects that were based on crowdsourcing, not just open source projects, and uh, the way we interact uh, with interfaces, uh, with intuitive websites, uh, really translates into how engaged people are. Uh, it seems obvious, but I think uh, this is the intersection between our work and the work of the technology group. Um, the intersection that is amazingly important and we should definitely um, put a stress on that when creating the bigger network. So the Wix working group, uh, which is led by Wikimedia Ukraine, uh, aims to explore potential difficulties and challenges uh, with, for example, making content and data available, security concerns for volunteers, because it's also important, and um, as well as compile all the information about existing cultural and national institutions, which we have in, this, in these two regions, um, as well as their data sets and information that they can provide. And the third uh, task, let's say, is to explore the, explore the intersection between the cultural and natural heritage, especially the one in danger. And um, kind of it's logical that Ukraine um, is leading the least working group uh, because we have um, a really, I would say nice, but it's not the proper word for that, um, examples of why uh, cultural and natural heritage need to be preserved. And about the insights that we have so far, um, that we need like, better access to the inter inter institutions and organizations and experts uh, is needed very much to conduct more precise research. Because uh, so far we launched uh, a few um, surveys that we were sending to experts, institutions, organizations, and the people who um, have expertise to answer our so far basic questions that we want to find out. And um, of course there is always a human factor that we cannot reach out to everyone because um, sometimes people are not responding, sometimes, sometimes they don't have all the information and um, we understand that some information that we really need uh, can be somewhere where we don't have access, let's say. Um, and we understand that, as Natalia said, we can't answer all the questions uh, now. We will have time maybe in the next project for that. Um, but of course, some basic things that we already have and uh, the answers that we got from the service, it's also valuable for us on this stage of the project. Uh, so there are maybe two ways. The first one, uh, to find out how to more effectively reach out to the institutions and the experts to have more answers. Or the second option is to um, search where else we can find the answers for our research. The second insight is about the, the war in Ukraine uh, really shows the precarity of cultural and natural heritage state. Uh, because as I told, it's Ukraine is kind of the um, good case study, an example of why uh, cultural and heritage, uh, cultural and natural heritage um, can be destroyed in one day, anytime, and why we should preserve it and which actions we should uh, do for it. Um, so, like, basically, uh, the final papers of our work group will be mostly based on this research because we also got a lot of uh, answer 
some responses from the uh, Ukrainian uh, cultural mutual institutions and some experts. And uh, we have, uh, I guess, enough resources to explore this question now. Um, and the third thing is about safety of the volunteers, uh, because it's also important during their photography in natural and cultural heritage sites. Um, it plays like really huge role in preserving the, all the heritage that we have. And we also conducted the um, surveys, and we, um, so far we got like around 50, 60, 60 responses from, the, from different photographers or volunteers who uh, were participating in uh, Mikhailov's monuments, Mikhailov's earth, or other Wikipedia uh, photo competitions. And uh, we asked them uh, about their safety during photography. Uh, but, uh, and some of the answers, most of the answers, I guess, were that sometimes uh, people also face in the situations where um, something is threatening their life during photography. But of course, also the example from Ukraine that now it's even forbidden uh, to photograph a lot of sinks, a lot of monuments, and forbidden to go somewhere and to feel free, let's say. So there are also many questions that we uh, ask them what, which factors make them feel secure uh, during their photography. And I guess the main thing is to find out um, why it is really important and which actions we could uh, we could take to uh, have like more safety for the photographers while photographing important natural or cultural heritage. Yeah, next one again me. Uh, but uh, this is our my main working group uh, for which in Georgia. It's legal and copyright. Uh, like you can assess all risks and uh, have a partnership with different uh, institutions. But the main issue is that institutions and especially governments uh, providing their resources uh, and ba databases uh, with some copyright. And uh, in most cases, the copyright is not the same as we use in Wikimedia platforms. Uh, and our main uh, goal there to uh, search uh, what the copyright types uh, is provided by the government side and how we can uh, change their minds uh, to change the, our copyright, uh, the copyright laws of the countries uh, to make it in line with Wikimedia policies. The second thing is that we are searching the freedom of panorama status in our region and especially in uh, these four countries. And uh, unfortunately, in the Eastern Europe, we have uh, issues uh, with freedom of panorama. Some countries have that, but some not. In our case, uh, Georgia and Ukraine does have freedom of panorama, and Poland uh, with Sweden, they have. But also in Sweden, there is another problem with the court. Uh, more details about the court case uh, will provide in our uh, research. And also, uh, because this is the Europe, and uh, like Ukraine and Georgia wants to join EU, uh, Poland and Sweden already the members of the EU, we need to uh, find out uh, what the uh, policy of EU as an institution uh, in uh, copyright and freedom of panorama policies. And that's why we are researching the EU directives. Uh, currently, as I said, uh, we researched the freedom of panorama status in our countries. There are issues uh, between uh, countries, uh, like issues in, within the countries with the freedom of panorama. Uh, in this case, we will provide some uh, recommendation for you how to how you can uh, use uh, the experience from our countries to change the mind in your countries uh, of your legislative institutions to change the freedom of panorama. And we will uh, also share with you uh, our uh, works, how we try to. Uh, change the mind of our governments. Uh, and in, in copyright policies, we we'll share uh, the examples from our countries, how our uh, governments uh, provide uh, their resources uh, and uh, what the type of the, uh, policies uh, we are using in our countries. And uh, once again, how we can change these policies uh, to make it in line with Wikimedia policies. And that at the last case, uh, we we'll provide the research from EU directives, but the directive was uh, adopted by uh, European Union, and unfortunately for now, it's not uh, mandatory for all countries 
to use uh, like these recommendations from the EU and that's why uh, all countries in EU they are using different kind of the copyright policies uh, for their materials and including the freedom of panorama for example uh, Germany has a freedom of panorama but uh, France and Italy was against this and they still have no freedom of panorama in their countries that's all okay, so basically that was the early insights from our working groups and very very soon we will have more so you are all welcome to read it later and this is just the picture for you to see some of our countries uh, natural and cultural heritage sites uh, there are uh, uh, let's give them a chance to find out which picture belongs okay. to each country it's First written one? there oh. but maybe it's so, any ideas for first picture with trees? Yes, that's what <laughs> we want to give you a chance to find out. Okay, let's keep the first one. Second one? The first one is Sweden. Yes, right, Georgia. Third one? Great. And. Okay, there is Poland and Sweden then, so... Poland. 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 Poland? Yeah, the second one is Poland. Yeah, second one is different. You can find out such a mix of culture. Well, you can find, but not in our region. So let's preserve it until it's not damaged, destroyed by any circumstances. Okay, and about the final event that I think I already explained, we have in some important exams in November, so again, you're welcome to join the event because we will have some public announcements in the week, so you can find it and uh, join as well. Thank you so much. Here you can also access to our main page on Meta and uh, find all the information, more information about the project and about what we are doing and uh, the possibilities to join as well if you want to join and have your contribution. You are also welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we have nine minutes, so we can take some questions if you like. Well, at least five minutes. Um, I, I'm, I'm the, uh, concerned that 
that are happening in Ukraine specifically. Um, in other countries, uh, are there some other examples uh, of these concerns? Um, mainly, uh, yes, the Ukrainians also are mostly about the, the ongoing uh, like situation when people can't access some exact uh, natural or, um, uh, or some monuments. Uh, but for other countries, uh, that's not the case. Mostly the responses are that um, they face some, for example, uh, mental issues uh, during the photography or um, some other people as well can come and tell like, why you're photographing this. So right. it's also not only the case of Ukraine, of course, but it happens in other countries. Um, no, it has yeah, yes. uh, I'll add more, one more thing. For example, in Georgia, mm -hmm. you know that two, uh, two hour territories was occupied by Russia. Mm -hmm. So if uh, someone will go to these territories from Georgia, for example, to take the picture, or someone local uh, will take the picture and provide to us, uh, the like, guard institution in that occupied territories will result <coughs> to not yeah. for the good reason. So yeah, they're treating so by the, by, let's say, uh, separatistic government. So. That's an issue, for example, in case of Georgia. And also some basic issues that people are describing that, for example, some of their equipment just broken or something, and it's also risks for them because they, they came, but they can't make photography very well. And all the responses uh, still in the analyzing process, so we will have a like, more concrete uh, answer on that first. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, mine's a very related question. Uh, so this uh, like guidance around safety, when will it be available? Like how general will it be? I'm just thinking about things like Mickey like Love's Monuments is taking place, like is happening now, and there's like for instance that like, Mickey Love's Monuments Palestine is happening. So people in West Bank can gather and take your photos. I just I just wondered like how general the guidance will be and when it will be. Available. Uh, well, we provide the general guidance, of course, but uh, with uh, the examples from our countries. Yeah, sure. Of course, it can't be like uh, like universal for everyone because there is different cases in different countries. But we at least we will provide like minimum basis for safety uh, from our examples, and uh, like they can adopt or change uh, for their realities. But we also maybe got some responses from some other countries, not just for countries. Presenting, uh, but also from the region, uh, so also there can be some good studies from there. Yeah. So it's time. Thank you for joining us.